Welcome back guys. It's Meredith again and I am here with our revitalized kit and I am down to just scraps. I was kind of playing around last night and loosely laid out some things that I thought would make the cool a cool base page for a layout. So I decided to go ahead and create one more with this kit. So I am using the revitalize um, limitless kit and essentials kit and yeah that's what I'm gonna do so I'm kind of gonna leave these here um they were some of the few remaining let me try to find it pieces that came in this 49 and market uh film strips that came in the kit these are actually trash these are the punch outs so I went through and and took these all apart. That's actually trash, but I'm keeping them because I think they're still super usable and I have a hard time throwing things away, so I'm gonna keep them for a little while. But this is all the frames that now I'm down to that I have left because I pulled these to use here and then I pulled a few more out in here in case I need them on this layout. I probably won't because that's kind of overkill, but I've got a couple more. But that little pack of, uh, Film strip acetates was just stacked full of goodness. So the picture that I'm going to use for this one was I had pulled this picture and showed it in my original um, video. It's another dance picture of my son, but this is like the day of his dance recital. So I want to use that picture. Um, I want to use the word photo. I'm going to cut off the S and I'm gonna call it recital photo. Focus on what excites you and the heart. Um, I've still got all my million colored arrows here that I just have been only using one on a page and then moving them to the next page. I think I like, I don't know if I'm gonna use any of those. This is the back of the packaging of one of my, um, some embellishment that came in this kit, I'm not sure. Move forward. Note to self and take note, things to remember. They, I wanna use this big frame to frame out my picture, the biggest one on these. These were in the um, essentials kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I know I need to add adhesive to that, I will in a minute. Then I've got, oh, these are some more ephemera that I had that little one, this one, another arrow, the alphabets, because I'm gonna write recital photos as my title. I pulled out this trim, so hopefully I can use that. And then I've, I'm down to scraps of paper. I've got this blue scrap, I've got this one, this little green one, this one, and a couple of these little text scraps that say eating, drinking, and planning on the back. I don't know which side I'm gonna use, I don't know. Okay, so, then I know that the general uh, bottom of my layout, the general, um, what is the word, base of my layout is gonna have these film strips, but I wanna add color to this because I don't want it to just be a bunch of black and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some scratch paper and put it underneath this so it doesn't matter if I get ink and whatnot off on my work surface. So let me grab some scratch paper. Alrighty, I've got my scratch paper here and I am going to stick it underneath the side of this paper. And I think I wanna use the following four colors, teal, blue. Oh, I only need three. I only have three sections here. Okay, how about the green in here, the blue for sure. I'm thinking in the teal. Do I have a lot of orange things in here? I don't. Okay, we're gonna use those three colors. We're not worried about the orange. And what I'm gonna do to add some color here, instead of the typical, oh, I guess I should show you what colors. I've got my peeled paint, my tumbled glass, and my blueprint sketch. And I think I want the green in the middle, this blue on top. You know what, I'm not sure how I want this. So I'm gonna sample like a pretend, I'm gonna pretend like this is my layout. And I'm just simply gonna, instead of using a tool, I'm simply gonna slide my paint, my ink on the page like this. I mean, I'm gonna do it a lot better on my real one, but let's just do this for an example. Let 
And so I can see how this kind of looks. I'm just gonna slide this underneath a little. Get rid of my picture for a minute. Yeah, I'm just seeing, cause I don't wanna waste a whole bunch of 12 by 12 good white paper. I'm seeing how this color scheme right here like this looks. If that was under there and that was under there and this was under here and my picture's in the middle. I think I like it. Okay. So now I can do it for real. Let me get this out of here. Okay. I'm going to start laying these out nicely. So I they are where I want them because I need to know exactly how these are going to be before I start swiping the ink on my page. And I think that that is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue tumbled glass ink pad and I'm going to put it exactly where this strip is. So I'm going to start it inside of the strip a little and well, let me just go. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do this. Whoa, I'm not worried about it making mistakes. I'm using like the corner of the ink pad a little more right now, like the edge. I'm tilting it a little, like, so it's not totally flat because I don't want it to be inking all up here, but I wanna get a little darker in the middle here. and I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to try to keep it fairly straight across my layout. See how this looks? The ink is still a little wet right now. Okay, I want to make it go a little bit beyond, a little bit further than this, because I want it it to stick out of the end of there. So I'm just going to take it and swipe it a little bit more. If you might want to practice these, this on scratch paper first, if you don't want to go directly on your layout, like I'm doing. Oh, this is nice though. I think I like that. Okay, so I've got that color. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move my scratch paper over here. This is scratch paper is just so when I'm going off the edge of the paper, it doesn't get on my work surface. And next I'm going to, so that was tumbled glass. And next I'm going to take my peeled paint. I'm gonna move those. And I'm just gonna go for it. Just sliding this back and down and again I'm kind of getting the edge of the ink pad not flat right now like it's not flat on my paper otherwise it would be inking way down here so it's just this edge so it's a little darker um, green there in the middle to get a little more color in there Oh, I didn't like, I don't like the way that that ended with such a strong line, but that's the nature of doing this. It's just really organic and mixed media. Let's see. I think I want them to go somehow. I don't want it to line up perfectly on this. Do you know what I mean? I need it either to be a little higher or a little lower. So I think I'll put that a little lower like that. Oh, I'm really liking how this is turning out. Now we're gonna move this scratch paper to this side and then I'm gonna use the dark blue ink up here and I want this one to be down here a little, I think. Oh, this is difficult, maybe I shouldn't. I think I'm gonna make the blue go above to kind of help finish out the layout. So I'm gonna take it up here and I'm just going to do the same technique that I did and I'm just using kind of the edge of the ink pad to get it all covered in here right now. I probably need new 
uh, reinkers and a little bit more ink on some of these ink pads. But I don't buy the reinkers when I buy the ink because I don't know what colors of ink I'm gonna like the best. So I don't have reinkers for most of my um, my inks at all. Okay, let's see how this looks when I set this down. I love it. Okay, so this is gonna be the background of my layout. So I'm gonna let this dry a little because these Distress Oxide inks are just a little like, they're not tacky. I don't know, they almost feel chalky right now um, because they just need to dry because they're like a hybrid type of ink. It's not really water-based, but it's not really, um, uh, what's the other kind of ink? I can't even, my brain isn't working. Anyway, I need to let them dry for a little. So I'm gonna let them dry and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I think these are, these are getting good. If you've watched any of the other videos that I have made with this kit, I like activating this um, Distress Oxide ink with a little water. Today is no different. And these little misters, um, I got a three pack of them on Amazon. I like these little ones because um, I just like them. They're easy to take with me to crops and they're a little bit smaller than the other one that I was using. I got them on Amazon. I forgot to tell you the links to everything I'm using here is in the description of this video. So even the links of things that aren't, that we don't sell on the Not Just For Boys website, like we don't sell Little Misters, but I stuck an Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video in case you're interested in them. Okay, so back to this. I just am splattering water and then to dry it, to like, whew, to pull it off, I'm just gonna use this piece of paper. worked really well on the dark blue. It worked somewhat well on this, on this light blue. You can hardly even tell that I put water on it. Let me try a little more. It's like I started activating it, but I think I let it dry too long before doing this. You know, it just doesn't work as well on the lighter colors. It's harder to see where the water activates it. That's fine enough. I'm ready to move on. I can lay these out like I like them. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere them. I'm just going to use regular ATG adhesive to adhere these and I'm not using a whole lot. I'm using enough to adhere it down um, a little bit. And when I get my layers and my pictures on here, I can adhere these better if I need to, but I know you can't see where I put the tape at all, but I just don't want to put tape all over the whole backs of them and then, then you might start seeing where I put the tape. And on these little ones that are open holes in the middle, these little, little tiny holes on the edges are solid they're actually not holes so um so the adhesive can just roll right down the edges oh how did i have this i think i had it like this before I'm not sure. I can't remember how I had this, guys, but it's going like this. And again, I'm just putting a little bit of adhesive down the edges. I'm getting that adhered. And then this top set as well. Okay, now that I have the base of my layout made, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this inside because I cannot stand that these sticky frames are not sticky enough to hold my pictures. It's kind of frustrating. So I'm just going to adhere that right in there right now. All right. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it with the colors. This is going very well, I think. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put some of these scraps uh, placed along the back of this so I can kind of build up the, um, 
the picture that I've got here. So let's start with a few different things. I wonder, see this is another reason why I maybe shouldn't put too much adhesive on these guys. Because now I'm just picking it up. That looks kind of good up there. I think I need to move it around a little. This little frame I could put over here. Let's see. Kind of like this. Oh, I didn't put this straight on my photo. Of course. Let's do this the easier way. Working from the back, and then I can make sure that my photo is in there straight. Much better. Like, I want these to stick out a little down here. Oh yeah, I like this nice overlapping. Um, I wonder, I think I need to pull this all the way up. Which is really in there. Hmm. I want this to stick out of the top, this thing's to remember, but it's so close to the top, I, I think I'm needing to move all of this down a little. But it's down too low, so that might not work right there. Mm, I'm not too sure about this. I don't need to fight with it. We will move on. Okay, and then some more goodies here. I want to use a little of this paper, maybe just sticking out from behind. I'm gonna cut this one down. I'm gonna cut this. So it's a little easier to work with. I like the tiny little pop of orange sticking out there. It doesn't go crazy. We'll see. Maybe I can put this things to remember in here somehow. Maybe. Note to self. I don't really care if it says note to self. I kind of like the little notebook look, but I don't like that it says note upside down. So eventually I may cover, somehow put something there to cover that up. Like this, focus on what excites you. Move forward because it's dance. So that would make sense. Hmm. Well, I also don't want to cover up the end of this. So maybe dragging that down a little. Might help, I'm not sure. Move forward. Oh, maybe I can put this on the top where I wanted the other one to go. That looks pretty good up I there. I want this to say recital photo. And I'm not even sure that I still want it to be this light peach, peachy pink color. So I'm going to trim the S off as best that I can so it looks like it never was there. That looks pretty good photo and I don't know where I want it I might want it recital up there and then photo that might look cool let's get the letters and try to spell out the word recital on one of my little rulers and see what it looks like laying right there and I'm gonna try to pick colors of the letters 
that give me a wide variety of color on this layout. I might not have a lot of options, but I might. We'll have to see after I get them all down here. And black isn't gonna show up very well on there. I really hoped I spelled recital correctly, and I think I'm gonna use this R. It's not black. Recital photos. And since I did use so many white letters, like I can alter these um, to make them a different color. Oh, what to do? I think I am going to. I'm going to try to make some of these this green and some of these this blue so it pulls all the colors up in my layout. And then the word photo. Oh, I don't know what color to make it. I think I want to make it this blue color really bad. I hope it colors nicely this blue on top of that light pink. Do we need an arrow? You know I am with arrows. Let's not worry about the arrow right now. Um, I did want to get in a little bit of this blue paper. I think I want to put it over here. I'm going to cut the biggest chunk, solid chunk that I can, which I believe is this right here. So I'm going to cut that solid chunk out and try placing it around. I know it's just scraps and many people probably would just say to throw it away but I'm gonna try to use it. And I don't need that big of a piece. I just need it to be about this long. So right now this piece is one and a half inches wide and I'm cutting it five and a half inches long. And it's just that little scrap. So it was one and a half inches wide by five and a half inches long. And I'm gonna wedge it really tightly close. So you're not gonna see a whole lot of it right under there. And I think I like that. And in this frame, okay, this paper doesn't pop enough because the frame is white and the paper is white. But, oh, that paper really doesn't show up very well either. Let's see. The blue in the frame is just too much. What other color do I have here? The yellow in the frame it kind of is not exciting either. So maybe I will take this paper. What else is on here? What other colors? Oh, maybe I'll take this little scrap and put the, the journaling lines in this frame. Okay. I think I decided what I want to do with this. I want to use it off center. So this orange border is slightly showing, but then it's the journaling lines. So I'm just going to trim this piece just like this and adhere it in there just like that. Okay. So I've got this trimmed and I'm just gently going to frame it out in here. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think I need to ink the edges of this frame. And I think I'm gonna ink the edges of this frame also this light blue. So let me get that light blue and get going with what I wanna do. It's the um, tumbled glass. And I've got this. And I'm just gently quickly inking the edges because I really want to bring that light blue color up because the, the dark blue I've already got up there and in the picture and down here. Oh yeah, this is good. And I'm bringing that light blue color up. And then I'm going to ink some of these letters. I'm going to go ahead and use the scratch paper from before. And I'm just going to add a little ink. Um, and I don't want to do all of them this color because I want to do some of them this green color too. And I want to leave some of them white. So I think I'll just do just the A 
in the green. Oh, and this word photo, I want to try to ink blue. I hope this works, guys. And I might just have to put layers upon layers to make it look right, but actually it's looking pretty good. And it's covering up that light pink that the word photos was in because it wasn't popping very well off my page. And so altering it is the answer. Alrighty, that is looking good. Recital photo. And then I've got to get a little of the green up there, so let me do that. I'm gonna take the um, shabby shutters, I think it's called. No, peeled paint. Peeled paint is what it's called. And I'm gonna get this A. Inked up with that. I'm using like a twisting motion. It seems to get the ink off easier for me. Oh, I think I need the bottom of the C to be that color too. So it didn't just look like the only color. Okay, this is looking good. Now, now I'm not sure what I if what I did here. I don't really like that orange in there. I really think I'm gonna pe peel that out right now and not do that. I'm gonna just pop it out. I don't like it. I don't. I don't think it needs to bring in another color of orange right there. I am going to use, well, now that I've inked this, you know what? This might look really good. Now that I've inked this whole thing a little, I'm going to ink it a little more. I'm just going to alter the whole entire frame. Just like I did to the letters. I'm just going to ink the whole frame with this light blue. And I'm just going really lightly over it. So now my frame is blue. And now I think if I put this text inside, it will pop out because it's not white on white anymore. I'll show you. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, I like that better. And then I think this heart down here, it's going to need to be dark blue and green. And I'm just going to color um, a little of it in the green. I'm going to color a little and see how it's looking to me before I color the whole entire thing. So I'm going to use my little tiny brush here. I'm gonna to try to leave the white border around it, around the heart, because there's a white outline around the whole thing. So I'm gonna try not to ink the outline. Let's see how a pop of green down here will look. I think it will look good, but I'm gonna mix it with the blue. Like I'm gonna make it modeled. So I've got the green on there, and then I'm gonna come back in with the dark blue and get those places in the middle. If I had more patience, maybe I would do the whole heart green and then just the polka dots blue with a marker or something. But instead I'm doing it this way. But there's a lot of different ways you can color these to get them how you like them. And you don't need to use ink. You could use, obviously, like I just said, markers or watercolor paints or watercolor colored pencils or regular colored pencils. So if you don't have a bunch of distress inks at your disposal, use another way. You know, there's other ways to color these. You could even use mist and like dip a brush in the mist and paint it on like it's watercolor paint. That would work well too. I hope this looks good. It's looking good. Okay. Of course, I'm going to get my little water tube and splatter 
the water on here. So it kind of looks like that. Okay, I'm thinking that I like what's happening so far. Um, do I need to use any of this paper? I think I'm done with these little scraps. Will this paper add anything anywhere? You know, I'm just gonna cut this little scrap off and I'm just gonna stick it around and see if it adds to my layout. Kinda like it right there. Nope. I liked it underneath here. That was kind of nice. And just a tiny bit sticking out, like just a little bit, like, ah, like that really looks nice. So I guess I'll leave that. I don't want to use an orange arrow. Um, recital photo. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I guess I really don't need an arrow. But maybe take note, to just build up this little cluster a little. Hmm. I'm going to cut out a couple of these from the packaging and see if I can't use them. I know there's not really a lot of green in there, like this color green. There's the bright green of the, um, the ink, but it's not the same shade as this. But maybe this might be able to go somewhere. Let's see. Even if it's just like inside of there. I don't want to cover him up at all. I don't like that. And then I'm going to cut this darker blue one as well. You know, before, when I'm adhering this whole thing down too, I think I'm gonna take that underneath paper that I have that has the orange and the blue right there, and I'm gonna flip it upside down and try to hide that orange because that orange is distracting to me on this layout that is mostly an analogous colors. Like it's mostly colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel, and that orange is really throwing me off. And actually, I think I'm going to color this L to be light blue. I know it colors light blue well um, over the top of this light pink color. So I'm gonna do that right now too because this color scheme is very much just greens and blues. So I think I'm gonna get rid of that orange on that paper by flipping that underneath paper right here all the way upside down. And then I think this layout is going to be really close to being done. Um, let's see, do I need this? Is it adding? No. No. This might not even add anything worthy. It might just be like overkill everywhere. In which case I won't use it. I kind of like that there. If I had another one down here, in green so let's try that they kind of even each other out and balance each other out this could be really good oh I love it I like it okay guys I have so many layers here and so much to adhere down I am gonna go off camera 
get this all adhered down and I will be right back. I'm going to use, of course, double-sided adhesive for most of these things. I'm gonna use um, glitter glue to adhere down all the, uh, what's it called, um, chipboard. And I'm gonna pop this up on foam tape. So it's raising above the top a little and I'm gonna pop this up on foam tape as well. So I will get all that adhered and I will be right back. All right, I'm almost done adhering and I just wanted to say a couple of things. So the paper that was underneath there that had the orange on it, even when I flipped it upside down, like it still had orange. So I had to trim off this top little bit that had orange on it. So there was no orange showing there. So that's how I got no orange showing there. And then to pop these up on foam tape, since this frame right here is... um chipboard and it has a little thickness to it to pop these up I don't want to put foam tape on the back of this anywhere where it's going to be overlapping that frame so I'm going to keep my foam tape far to this side and I'm going to just I just wanted to show you that so you don't have like a weird bump over where this frame is so I'm keeping my foam tape over there and then I think I'm doing a good job at keeping it over there. And then I'm gonna cut a real, some real thin pieces of foam tape to put down that side where it's gonna be on this side of the frame, but it's not very much. So I just want these pieces to be really thin. And I think that should do it pretty well. And then it nestles right on there. Yeah, just like that, okay. So that's how you can maneuver the the foam tape so it's not a weird, funny bump over wherever there's chipboard on your layout. And then I'm gonna do the same to this little guy down here. Um, whenever I was doing this piece that's in my hand right now, I had to, oops, too high. I had to trim off part of the screen tab, otherwise it was sticking out over here and I didn't like it. So I put it right down there. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you that. And, you know, I really love splattering my layouts at the end and I really think this would look sharp with a couple black splatters, but I, it's kind of busy. Like this layout has a lot going on with all the layers and embellishments. So I'm thinking I should skip the splatters on this or maybe just do a very few, like, I don't know. I think I might skip them. I think I'm just gonna skip the splatters altogether on this one. You could add them if, if you want. Uh, I am gonna give this a little touch down of adhesive so it doesn't keep lifting because you know I barely adhered those on so now I can go in and add a little more okay and then I'm gonna go at the very end with my trusty black pen and do three I need to go all the way through since these are see-through Okie doke. There we are. And I think this is for sure the last layout that I'm making using this kit. Um, I will do a wrap up video and I'll show you what I have left out of this kit. And I will see you in that. If you use this layout to inspire you um, to make another layout, even if it's not with the same supplies, we would love to see it on our Not Just For Boys Kit Club community group. And all the links to all the things and stuff like that are all going to be in the description of this video. So thank you guys again for watching and I will see you with my wrap up video. Bye.